Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Common Sense with Dr. Ben Carson. I'm your host, Ben Carson, and we have a guest that we've had before. He is the epitome of common sense, Senator Tommy Tuberville from Alabama. And uh, Coach, it's always good to see you. Thank you for spending a few minutes with us today. Thank you, Dr. Carson. Thanks for allowing me to be on. And, you know, this is one of my favorite podcasts. I, I enjoy just talking about a lot of things that really mean a lot to the American people. And sometimes we forget about that. Well, you know, recently uh, you hosted a roundtable on parents' rights. And obviously this is getting to be a, a big subject because, you know, the Marxist ideology says the kids actually belong to the government. and. Uh, I don't think we believe that for one minute. But what were some of the biggest issues that you heard from from the parents? Well, the, I think the main focus, Dr. Carson, goes back, you know, from the parents, knowing that uh, uh, they're seeing out there the destruction of the family, you know, taking away the father from and and the mother, separate them, uh, you know, taking less control away from the parents and giving it to the government, as you said. Uh, but it all goes to one thing, you know, the best teachers in the world are our parents, not the people in the classroom. Uh, they're, they're our parents, and they teach you the difference between right and wrong. Uh, again, I traveled in 49 different states when I was a coach recruiting, went into schools and went into homes, talking to people, talking to young men with one parent, uh, two parents or no parents. Uh, and I saw the difference. I saw the difference in the type of education that they were allowed and given. So, you know, two weeks ago, we, as you said, we had the, a round table and it was basically about school choice. It was about giving the opportunity for parents to pick, an, uh, to pick the, the second alternative from them to educate their kids after they left the home. Uh, and we have got so many of these schools that are indoctrination centers uh, from the federal government. And it's, uh, I've seen it, uh, I've, I've looked at it, I've fought against it, uh, not just when, since I've been here as a politician, but as a coach talking to, looking at a, a, a curriculum on a transcript that a young man or young woman had, had, had been pushed on in their, in their school. And I'm wondering, well, what, what is this? I mean, what, what, I don't see any reading and writing and math and science and history that are being taught uh, some, not much, but we do have some good teachers and administrators in this country, but we, we're being overrun uh, by the socialists in this country that are teaching government control. Well, how, how pervasive is the LGTB agenda uh, in public schools? Have you gotten an impression? Yeah, well, I tell you, what you're seeing is you're seeing a division uh, in the schools of pushing a narrative. Uh, instead of pushing, hey, we're all Americans, we're going to teach you the basics of life, we're going to teach you the basics of education, and we're going to give you the opportunity to make up your own mind the things that, that we should be doing. Uh, don't, don't teach people uh, what to think, but teach them how to think. Uh, and we've forgotten about that. And that comes down to uh, the, the groups that are being pushed, as you just said, the the narrative that's being pushed all across our country to our kids about what they should believe, what type of groups they should follow, uh, what they should believe in. Uh, we're, we're getting away from our Christian values at, at the bottom line. Uh, the bottom line is they hate Christian values in our schools. Because, uh, because legislation is not going to be enough to change the woke ideology. We, we really need a change of heart. And, you know, this country started out so well because uh, our founding document talked about the fact that our rights came from our creator. And uh, there was much mention of our creator in our, in our, by our founders. And as we've moved away from our faith, we're spiraling downward fairly quickly, it seems. But um, people are very concerned about the education, as you mentioned, people on are reading at a lower level, mathematics and science, we're scraping the bottom of the barrel vis-a-vis -vis other comparable nations. And is some people have said that the answer is school choice. Uh, what do you think about that? Oh, I, I, I definitely believe in that. The, the, the problems that we're having is competition. This, this country 
you and I both know was built on competition, giving everybody an opportunity. And then you take taking that opportunity and make the best of it, make the best out of yourself. And then what you want to do with your life the, with the problem that we're having now is our education system has been uh, taken over by the federal government uh, and the federal government, especially the administration that we have now is 100 percent for the unions. Uh, our education system is for people to make a living teaching education. Uh, has nothing to do with teaching our students anymore. It's about education and about the about the money that they can make, the the opportunities that the administrators and the teachers can have. Now, listen, I was a teacher and an administ- and an educator all my life. I understand that, but the problem is, uh, it's more about the unions and more about the teachers and administrators than it is about the students. And it's got to be the other way around. We've got to think more about the young people, what we're teaching them, how we're teaching them, give them the opportunity to make their decisions. But these teachers unions, and we especially noticed during COVID of how they just ramrodded uh, our schools, closed them down, wouldn't come back to work. Uh, But they were sending their kids uh, either homeschooled or to school choice schools that were open. Uh, It's a bunch of hypocrisy. And so we have got to get back to thinking about the young people, which is our number one commodity in this country, uh, the young people, we got to think about them before we think about anybody else. So school choice wouldn't make competition. It would take kids from one school to another, uh, give the opportunity to for these schools that are losing kids, say, well, what are we going to do? We're going to be out of a job if we don't start competing and teaching these kids something and, and making sure the parents understand what we're doing and we're doing the right thing for the future. Absolutely. And one of the things that uh, promotes school choice is vouchers, uh, being able to use them uh, in many different settings. You know, there was a Supreme Court case of Mocking versus uh, Carson, no relationship, um, about using vouchers in religiously or faith-based schools. And uh, what do you think about that? Oh, there's no doubt that, that we need to use that. You're, the faith-based schools are being attacked. There's no doubt. Uh, you know, the, this, this administration and the direction that this country is going right now uh, wants nothing to do with faith-based anything, uh, whether it has anything to do with the military or, or anything to do with our economy or anything to do with our education system. And so we've got to get away from that. You know, this country was built on Judeo-Christian values and uh, those values are being attacked every day, but we need to be able to, to, to tell a parent or parents, you know, with two parents, give them the opportunity to say, if you don't want your kid to go to this government school, which I call them, we're going to give you the ten or twelve or fourteen thousand dollars a year to use in the school of your choice. Uh, and uh, again, it goes back to having the competition to make everybody better. We want to make the government and what I call them government schools are actually that we in the past we've called them public schools. Uh, everybody should be be made better by competition. We don't stay the status quo. I gave a speech on the Senate floor a couple of weeks ago. We're barely in the top twenty in education in the world now, whether it's writing, math, history, science. We, we teach the most basic uh, maths in a lot of our schools, a lot of these government schools, when kids in China are taking in elementary school algebra and calculus. I mean, it's, we wonder why we're falling behind. It's because of our basic values and the things that we're doing to our young people. And again, this is coming from our government uh, and it's and I think it's on purpose. Uh, we've been driven to to dumb down this country, and if we don't if we don't correct this, Doctor Carson, this country will not be the same as you and I had an opportunity to grow up in. No, you're exactly right, and we can certainly tell you all about the Super Bowl and Taylor Swift, but we're not going to be able to tell you much about differential equations. <laughs> exactly. You know, last year, the Biden administration rolled out its new Title IX regulations, expanding the meaning of sexual discrimination to include gender identity. So schools and colleges that receive federal funding cannot ban transgender athletes. What, is, what does that mean to women athletes? Well, first of all, uh, it, in, being up here three years in the Senate, uh, 
I think it's pretty ironic of what what uh, this administration, the far left administration, is trying to do to our young people, try to confuse them and give them about 60 different options of what gender they can choose. <laughs> it, it makes no sense. Uh, other than the fact that, you know, all they're trying to do is is throw a, uh, a rod in the cog of, of things that are supposed to be working and working like they have for 247, 248 years. Uh, you know, last year on Good Friday, the Biden administration came up with about 116 different pages of, of, of regulations for Title IX, new regulations. Now, now it worked perfectly for 50 years, but since they got control of it, they've, they've had the crazies from the very far, far left say, listen, we don't need Title IX the way it was because we really don't like genders. We, we want everybody to be the same, which we all know that we're not. Okay. And then that's kind of worked its way down into sports. And I'll tell you, in this country, we are very proud of the sports and the things that have the opportunity to teach our young people all the way up through professional sports to be able to make a living. I saw yesterday where the Olympic Committee uh, passed a, a rule that this year that they're going to allow men to box in uh, the Olympics against women. Uh, now, uh, yeah, it, it is on. You can't. You you couldn't make this up in a in a movie about about the Twilight Zone. You and I grew up in. You 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 know it's 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 that crazy. And they uh, they want they don't want to separate anything. They want everybody to be the same. Uh, they want to tear down Title IX. Now, now, I grew up in Title IX, and it's one of the most successful government laws uh, that has been passed and signed over the books here in Washington, D.C. One of the few things that's actually worked for the, for the betterment of young young women. And now this, a lot of the same feminist groups that were for that are now uh, siding with this far-left Biden administration, this progressive administration, wanting to say, no, nah, we don't want that anymore. We want everybody to be the same. That doesn't work. Okay, you're going to eliminate right. women's sports. Is what's going to happen? That's exactly right. Well, now you've been a tireless uh, warrior on behalf of not only women but everybody. The whole concept of fairness and and common sense, and we really appreciate what you've been doing. And I know uh, we have a hard stop here, so uh, I just want to thank you for taking the time this morning. Uh, and we'll need to have you back when we have a little more time because there are a whole bunch of issues around this. But uh, we can't make it without courageous representatives like yourself. And is there a parting word that you would have for our audience? Well, you know, we live in a dangerous world. We live in a world where there's a lot of question marks on what our, our government's trying to do, for, do for, uh, not for us, but against us. Uh, you know, I want people to watch what's going on because, you know, if you tear down our family and you tear down our genders, then we've got huge problems. I've got this bill on the floor called, called Protect the Women and Girls in Sports Act, which protects uh, these young women and girls, not at just an older age, but a younger age, from having to participate against boys. And if we continue down this road and don't pass something like this, Dr. Carson, again, as I said, you will tear down what I believe, because I spent so many years in it, is sports, where you learn you know, life, you know, life lessons, uh, you know, winning, learn how to win, learn, learn how to handle losing, and then learn how to compete with other people. Uh, and what we're getting ready to do is take the women out of the equation, the young women, uh, uh, because when you have no genders, it's, I mean, it's, it's a universal sport and that's not going, that's not going to fly with the American people. So Absolutely. just keep watching and, and fighting against that. Pure sports, the way it's supposed to be done is very elevating. And Cal Ripken once told me that 90% of CEOs played organized sport as children, and 90% of inmates did not. That tells you something, doesn't it? <laughs> and look how many new women leaders we have in the last 50 years, Dr. Carson. Women leaders across this country, and as you just said, it goes back to what how they were able to learn those things, uh, you know, in 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 the young younger days of their lives about how to compete and how to deal with people you know in tough situations so uh, heaven forbid we lose this but uh, we're headed down that that path with this with this administration but that that's the reason and hopefully nine or ten months we'll have a new president a new administration in this white house where we can reverse this trend amen 
Well, thank you so much, uh, Senator. We'll look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you. I want to remind our listeners of the importance of education and values and how we pass those values on to our young people. And that's what our Little Patriots Learning program is about, littlepatriotslearning.com, free of charge, teaching our young people, K through five, those values and principles that allowed us to rise from obscurity to the pinnacle of the world in record time. It was not a coincidence. And uh, make sure you get your young people involved in programs of that nature. Well, that's it for today, folks. Please come back and join us next week. Subscribe uh, for free, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts from. Rate us, review us, and spread the word. Because our goal is to make common sense common once again. And remember the cornerstones. Faith, liberty, community, and life. See you next week.